So uh, business analytics is basically converting data into information and converting that information into business decision. Data means just your raw data. Information means any kind of trend, any kind of information that you can derive from that data. And business decision means you are taking any business related decision on the basis of that data. So for example, let's take an example of biscuit factory. Now you have two brands, Marigold and Hide and Seek. Now you want to evaluate how customer are rating those biscuits. So once you collect all the ratings, you analyze that older people or adults are preferring Marigold over Hide and Seek. Whereas children's or kids are preferring hide and seek over marigold. Now this is the information that you are gathering from your data. Now how can you use that information? So suppose if you want to create an advertisement for marigold, your target audience will be adults. So you will put adults in that advertisement. Whereas if you want to create an advertisement for hide and seek, your target audience is children's. So you will definitely put children's over adults in an advertisement for hide and seek. So this is what business analytics is using data, extract information from that data and do some business decisions or business actions using those information. Now, let me ask you another question. How many of you have used business analytics in your life? Any kind of business analytics or any kind of analytics. Just type yes if you have used business analytics in your life. Now, I am seeing a lot of no's in the chat. But let me tell you one thing. Have you ever used previous years question paper for preparing for your exam? I think most of you have used previous years of paper. You must have looked at last five years or last 10 years of paper. Now, why were you looking at those papers? Sometimes you want to know what kind of questions are coming in test. You want to know what section or what lectures have the largest weightage in the test. So you are doing some kind of analytics on those papers. So I think all of you have used business analytics in your lifetime. Now for today's topic, we will be discussing about present values or customer lifetime value. This is a very important topic of business analytics. And we'll use a case study to learn this topic. Now, how many of you have used Ola, Uber, Food Panda, Uber Eats, Zomato or Swiggy? I think all of you have used any of these apps sometime in your life. Now, when you use these apps for the first time, you get a discount coupon or a free ride coupon. For example, in Ola and Uber, you get a free first ride coupon on Swiggy or Uber Eats or Food Panda you get free first food delivery. Even from different restaurant, you get first free meal or say 60% off coupon on Swiggy. Now, why all these companies are giving you those coupon codes? Why Ola and Uber are providing you free ride for the first time? The answer lies in the customer lifetime value. They are hoping that if you are purchasing or if you are using their service for the first time, then you will use it again. And they are thinking that they will make a lot of profit from your next purchases as compared to first free ride or the losses made in the first ride or first delivery. So how to calculate how much discount should we give? That comes from the calculation of customer lifetime value. Now let's take an example. Now we have John. 
John is an analytics manager at Gold Sim. It's not gold, it's gold. So Gold Gym has multiple branches all over India and they are planning to open a new branch at Old Delhi. Now John has a friend. His name is Navneet. Navneet is a marketing manager at Coupon Buy. He is also an advisor to Gold Gym. He is suggesting that Gold Gym should offer a membership at rupees 100 per month for the first month whereas the normal price of gold gym membership is usually 2000 per month. So Navneet is saying that for the first month, let's give this membership for just 100 rupees at our new location at Old Delhi. Now we have another person. We have Rakesh. Rakesh is a finance manager at Gold's Gym. Now Rakesh has calculated that the monthly expense of an individual is 500 rupees per month. So suppose if a customer is joining a gym with a membership, then the gold gym is almost investing 500 rupees on that person. So this includes expenses like electricity, equipment, trainer cost, etc. So we can say that when Navneet is saying that we should give the membership at rupees 100 for the first month, Rakesh is saying that due to this, we will be making a loss of 400 rupees. Our expenses are rupees 500 per customer. But Navneet is saying to give the same membership for rupees 100 for the first month. So overall, we will be making a loss of 500 minus 100. That is 400 rupees on this deal for each customer. So Rakesh is saying that we will be making a huge losses because we will make around 400 rupees loss for each customer we get from this offer. Now Navneet is saying that uh, you will get a lot of customer by making the losses for the first month. Now John, the analytics guy, want to use the customer valuation concept he has learned in the business analytics training to make the data driven business decision. So a question for you, according to you, who is correct? Just type A, B, C in your answer. A is the finance guy who is saying that we will be making 400 rupees losses for each customer. B is the marketing guy, Navneet, who is saying that we will get lot of customer because of this offer. Now business analyst or John is saying that we first have to look at the data to understand whether we will be making profit or losses on this offer. Just type ABC in your chat. Yeah, so most of you are correct. The correct answer is C, business analyst or John. You can see that this is correct. So what kind of information do we need for making a data driven business decision? So the first concept is retention rate. So suppose 100 customers join our membership. Now out of those 100 customers, some percentage of customer will again buy a second month's membership at the full price. We will we were giving discount only for the first month membership. So suppose out of 100, 60 people join the second month membership that percent is our retention rate. How many customers are joining the next month membership? So for example, if the retention rate is 60%, our first month customer base say 100 customer, then our second month customer base will be 60% of 100, that will be 60. Now our third month customer base will be we had 60 customer in the second month, 60% of those 60 will be 36. So we will be having 36 customer in the third month. So this is the concept of retention rate. How many customers are retained over a period of time? Let's look at an example to understand this. 
सो सपोज अवर स्टार्टिंग कस्टमर नंबर इज हंड्रेड दिस इज जस्ट एन एग्जाम्पल रेवेन्यू पर कस्टमर इज से टेन एंड रिटेंशन रेट इज एट्टी परसेंट सो इन ईयर वन वी हैव अराउंड हंड्रेड कस्टमर्स वी हैव अ रेवेन्यू पर कस्टमर ऑफ टेन देन द टोटल रेवेन्यू ऑफ ईयर वन विल बी हंड्रेड इंटू टेन दैट इज थाउजेंड नाउ इन द सेकेंड ईयर अवर रिटेंशन रेट इज एट्टी परसेंट सो हाउ मेनी ऑफ कस्टमर हैव रिटेन इन टू सेकेंड ईयर दैट वी कैन फाइंड आउट बाय मल्टीप्लाइंग अवर स्टार्टिंग कस्टमर बेस इन टू रिटेंशन रेट सो हंड्रेड इन टू एट्टी परसेंट दैट विल बी अराउंड एट्टी द रेवेन्यू ऑफ सेकेंड ईयर विल बी एट्टी कस्टमर्स एंड ईच कस्टमर इज ब्रिंगिंग अराउंड टेन रुपीज सो द रेवेन्यू विल बी एट हंड्रेड इन द थर्ड ईयर हाउ मेनी कस्टमर्स वी विल गेट इन थर्ड ईयर दैट विल बी एट्टी इन टू एट्टी परसेंट सो अराउंड वी हैव रिटेन सिक्सटी फोर कस्टमर्स इन द थर्ड ईयर द टोटल रेवेन्यू ऑफ थर्ड ईयर विल बी सिक्स फोर्टी सिक्सटी फोर इंटू टेन नाउ इन द फोर्थ ईयर विल गेट एट्टी परसेंट ऑफ दिस सिक्सटी फोर कस्टमर्स सो सिक्सटी फोर इंटू पॉइंट एट विल गेट अराउंड फिफ्टी वन कस्टमर्स सो वी हैव लॉन्च अ ऑफर फॉर हंड्रेड कस्टमर्स एंड एट द एंड ऑफ फोर्थ ईयर वी ओनली हैड फिफ्टी वन कस्टमर्स दिस इज ड्यू टू द रिटेंशन रेट now i have listed revenue over here also now let's go back to our gold gym problem now this time we will be using excel sheet to find out the total revenue now what we are planning to do is see our retention rate is suppose 70% per month now from where we get this 70% number this is using our other branches data so we have multiple branches we can use any branch data and easily find out how many customers are recurring so overall we have found out that 70% of customers are retained over month so if we get 100 customer in the first month most probably we will get 70% of those 100 that is 70 customers will again buy the second month membership this is what this retention rate means now here i have also listed the cost and the price so the cost per customer as we have known is 500 per month now the first month price we are offering is 100 so we are accepting the navneet's offer that we should give first month membership at rupees 100 and the normal price is 200 now what we are planning to do is we are planning to do the calculation for 24 months or 2 year here we will take the customer base and here we'll write the profit we are getting from each customer then we calculate the total profit and at last we will add all the total profits we have made and finally we find out the per customer profit we are going to make so let's first fill this column that is month column so month 1 month 2 we want to fill up to 24 months now instead of writing all this 1 2 3 4 excel is smart enough excel knows what we want to do so if we just select this three cells and hover over to this right bottom corner and if we hold this plus symbol and drag it down you will see that excel has automatically filled all the numbers so i entered 1 2 3 so excel knows that i am writing 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to n number so i have filled it till 24th now suppose in the month 1 we are getting 100 customer this 100 customer is just a number actual number of customer can be anything what we want to do is we want to find profit per customer so irrespective of 100000 you will get the same result so suppose in the first month we are getting 100 customer how many customer will be retained for the second month out of this 100 customer 30 customers will attract because our retention rate is 70% and 
customers will be remained. So we'll multiply 100 into this 70 percent. This is the number of customers that we will have in the second month out of this original 100 customer. 30 customer will attract and 70 customer will join for the second month membership as well. Now let's calculate for the third month. Again, out of this 70, we will multiply by 70% because 70% is our retention rate. So out of this 100, in the third month, 49 customer will buy the third month membership. Now how many of these 49 customer will be retained in month four. Again, we will multiply this by. Now we want to fill this for all other cells as well. Now you can see that I am just multiplying the upper value with 70%. So for calculating 34.3, I multiplied 49 with 70%. For calculating 49, I multiply 70 with this. So what we can do is we can drag this formula downwards. So for example, here the formula is C11, just the above cell. The problem is this, instead of C470% cell, Excel automatically jumps to next cell that is C5 cell. You can also see this here. Here, Excel has shifted C11 to C12. So now I'm getting the above cell. But instead of this 70% cell, now this cell has shifted two rows below. So I'm getting C6. So what I want to do is I want to fix this C4 cell in this formula. So for example, I don't want this cell to be moved in the formula when I'm dragging it down. I only want the first cell address to be moved while I am dragging this down. So what we can do is we can select this cell reference C4 cell C4 and we can add dollar symbols in front of C and 4. Now this will not do any difference in this formula but when I drag it down you can see that now I'm getting the correct result. Now you can see that in the formula, this first cell reference is moving as I'm dragging the formula, but this second cell reference is not moving. That's because I have added dollar symbols in front of the row and column name. So let's drag it down to month 24. So let's check for the month 24 formula. Yeah, now it is correct. Now let's check the month 24 formula. You can see that this is a multiplication of C30 that is cell just above and the 70% mark. So what we are saying is that in the first month, we have 100 customer in the second month with 70% retention rate, we have around 70 customer. In the eighth month, we have just eight customer out of those 100 customers due to this retention rate. And at the end of say 16th or 17th month, we only have 0.33 customer. Now you can say that 0.33 customer is not possible. We can either have 0, 1, 2, 3. So these are just the average figures. So if you run this program three times in one time, you will get one customer. So these are just the average figures. If we change say 100 to 10,000, this will become 33 instead of 0.33. So for now, we'll just take these numbers as it is. There is no need to convert this to integer. So we have calculated the customer for each month. Now let's calculate how much profit we are getting from each customer. 
सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन मंथ वन अवर कॉस्ट इज फाइव हंड्रेड एंड वी आर सेलिंग द मेंबरशिप एट जस्ट रुपीज हंड्रेड सो वी विल बी मेकिंग अ लॉस ऑफ फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज सो इन द फर्स्ट मंथ विल बी मेकिंग अ लॉस ऑफ फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज फ्रॉम द सेकेंड मंथ अवर नॉर्मल प्राइस इज टू थाउजेंड रुपीज अवर कॉस्ट इज फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज सो हाउ मच प्रॉफिट वी विल बी मेकिंग विल बी मेकिंग अराउंड फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड रुपीज प्रॉफिट इन द थर्ड मंथ ऑल्सो द नॉर्मल प्राइज इज टू थाउजेंड एंड द कॉस्ट इज फाइव हंड्रेड सो विल बी मेकिंग अगेन फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड रुपीज फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ द मंथ विल बी मेकिंग फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड रुपीज ओनली पर कस्टमर because we are not offering any discount for the next month so let's drag it down so if we extend it you can see that we have 1500 return for all the rows so we are making loss of 400 rupees in the first month and we are making a profit of 1500 rupees in the next months from month 2 to month 24 now what will be our total loss or total profit for the first month we have 100 customers for each customer we are making a loss of 400 rupees so what will be total loss we can just multiply these two number so per customer loss is 400 and we have around 100 customers so our total losses for the first month will be around 40000 rupees now for the second month we have around 70 customers and our profit per customer is 1500 rupees so we will multiply these two number and we will get the total profit so in the month 2 we will be making around 1 lakh 5000 rupees of profit in the first month we were losing around 40000 rupees now let's calculate this for the third month as well so we have 49 customers and then the profit per customer is 1500 so we'll write this now we want to use the same formula we are just multiplying see for example for here we are just multiplying these two numbers for here we were just multiplying these two numbers for here we will be multiplying these numbers so we can drag this formula or extend this formula to other cells so if i extend this formula you can see that just randomly check any cell here we are multiplying these two numbers which is correct so yeah in the month 10 we are having around four customers and the profit per customer is 1500 and we are multiplying this to find the total profit so you can see that we have calculated all this revenue from different months in the last month we are just getting around 41 rupees of profit we can ignore this values as well since this values are very small it is not making any much sense so compared to this 1 lakh value 41 rupees is too small to be ignored and that's why we have ignored other months as well means we can calculate it for 3 years as well but the value is so small that we can ignore that number so you can see that here we have 1 lakh and here it's just 41 rupees so we can ignore this values but for now we will be using 2 months value so what is the total profit we will be getting that will be the sum of all these numbers because from our campaign we acquired say 100 customer but those 100 customers will also purchase membership in the coming months so the total revenue from those 100 customers for all the months or for their lifetime will be we can add this revenue which we have calculated so we'll use formula sum sum is to calculate total now we can select all these values
so you can see that this is the sum for 100 customers from the 100 customer if we consider them that the retention rate is 70 percent we'll be getting around 3 lakh rupees so we were making losses on the first month but for the coming month we'll be getting lot more revenue and overall we will be getting 3 lakh rupees from this 100 customer so now let's calculate the lifetime value per customer so this is the lifetime value for 100 customers what will be the lifetime value for per customer we can just divide this by 100 so the lifetime value per customer is around 3100 rupees even after including a minus 400 rupees we were making losses in the first month so after including this 400 rupees loss the customer lifetime value is still positive so if i acquire one customer by this campaign of say 100 rupees per month membership then again i will be making around 3100 rupees from that customer now you know the reason why uber ola offers you free rides or swiggy zomato offers you free first delivery or free first food or meal that's because during your lifetime you will purchase from them lot more and you will compensate for that loss that they are making on the first delivery or first ride so here also in our gym we are making losses of 400 rupees in the first month but overall the gold gem is making around 3100 rupees per customer using this offer i have a small question for you so for example uh, here the question is if the number of customer at the start of the year is 100 and the retention rate is 90 percent how many customers will be retained after the end of two years? Just write A, B, C, D in the chat. I am seeing a lot of A's in the chat. So yes, A is the correct answer, 81. How we have calculated it? So 90% of 100 is 90 customers. So at the end of year one, we'll be having 90 customers. Now, at the end of year two, how many customers will be having? 90% of those 90 customers. That comes out to be 81. Now, I can also see a lot of you are asking how we calculated the 70% retention rate. So, for calculating that, we have to use the previous data. So, suppose you take any other branch of your gold gem you just analyze data of one month so for example in one month you get around 50 customers now you will track how many of those 50 customers will be retained in the next month or the next month or the next month so you will keep track of those 50 customers and at the end you can average it out to find the final retention rate so retention rate is something we calculate using our previous data or you can say industry standards as well if you are not have any previous branches so suppose if some new company is coming into food delivery they will just look at the data of swiggy and ola and they will know what is the retention rate you can also perform surveys as well so uh, there are many ways to calculate those retention rates So we have another question for fixing a cell reference which symbol is used in Excel. So we have four options dollar symbol, pound symbol, percentage symbol or this power symbol. Just write your answer in the chat this again i am seeing a lot of a's in the chat 
So yes, dollar symbol is correct. We have used dollar symbol in calculating the number of customer. We fix this cell using the dollar symbol. So you can see that we have used dollar symbols in front of row number and column name. So in this analysis, we missed one thing and that is interest rate. So suppose if you have two options, uh, your friend is offering you 100 rupees today and he is offering you 100 rupees tomorrow or after one year. So in the first case, he or she is offering you 100 rupees right now. In the second case, he is offering you 100 rupees at the end of year one or you can say that the at the start of year two. Which one will you choose and why? So just write case one or case two according to what you will choose. Yes, uh, case one is correct. Why? Because you can deposit this 100 rupees into a bank and you will get around 5% of interest rate. So after one year, the interest on this 100 rupees is 100 into 5% that comes out to be 5 rupees. So at the end of year two, this 100 rupees is equivalent to 105 rupees because if you submit this 100 rupees into bank, you will get a 5 rupee interest rate. So at the end of year one, this 100 rupee will become 105 rupee. So you can't compare, means if you compare 105 versus 100, you will always prefer this scenario that is getting the money right now. And this concept is known as time value of money. So if you have money right now, that money will be worth more after some time due to this interest rate. So suppose this interest rate is 10. Suppose this interest rate is 10. So after one year, I will get 10 rupees in interest. So my total will be 110 rupees after one year. So 100 rupee of today is not equal to 100 rupee of tomorrow, or you can say 100 rupee of after one year. So now what is the value of this 100 rupee tomorrow in present day value? So here we calculated the future value of this 100 rupees. So future value of 100 rupees after year two, after year one at the start of year two is 110 rupee. Now what is the worth of this 100 rupee of year two in today's term? We can find it out using a formula. Which is your money divided by 1 plus interest rate to the power of time. Here our time is 1 because there is difference of 1 year. So 90.90 is the total value of 100 rupee in today's terms. So if someone is offering you 100 rupee after year 1, that is equivalent to he or she offering you 90.9090 rupees today. Now, if I copy this number here. Now, what will be the interest on this number? That is this value into 10%. This is how much my bank will give me the money for interest. So we'll be getting 99.090 as an interest. So what will be the total amount? This plus this. You can see that these two are equal now. 
सो द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ रुपीज हंड्रेड इज नाइंटी पॉइंट नाइन जीरो इन टू डेज टर्म नाउ इन अवर कैलकुलेशन वी डिड नॉट इनकॉर्पोरेटेड दिस कंसेप्ट सो फॉर अस फोर्टी थाउजेंड रुपी ऑफ टूडे is equivalent to 40000 rupees of say after 2 years because we never accounted for discounting in this calculation we just added the sum of all the values so we have to correct this and this concept is known as discounting and the rate which we are using is known as discount rate or the interest rate don't confuse this discount rate with the discount you are getting from a store or anything this discount rate is your interest rate that the banks are offering and it is very important to use discount rate while calculating customer lifetime value the formula is 1 divided by 1 plus discount rate raised to the power time we have already used this formula in our excel so discount rate is your interest rate which is normally 5% in india so now let's solve this small case study now we have solved this in calculating the retention rate so if you remember we solved this we calculated the number of customers and we calculated the total revenue so 1800 645510 this we were getting after using the retention rate now we want to use discount rate as well to calculate the present value of this revenue for example here 800 rupee at the at the start of year 2 is not equal to 800 rupee of today so we cannot add this 1000 rupee to 800 rupee to calculate the total present value we have to first discount this 800 rupees so this will be probably 770 rupees or something like that in today's term and then we can add those data to find the present value so this is the formula of discount rate 1 divided by 1 plus discount rate to the power time so we have already calculated that in year 1 we are getting 1000 rupee in year 2 we are getting 800 rupees in year 3 we are getting 640 rupees and year 4 we are getting 510 rupees so now the discount rate is 10% if we apply this formula for the first year we are getting 1000 rupees so time is zero so 1000 rupee is the present value so we can write 1000 rupees here at the start of year 2 we are getting 800 rupees now this 800 rupees is not equal to 800 rupee of present value so we have to discount it and how we will discount it we will use this formula this formula will give us the will give us the multiplication factor so 1 divided by 1 plus 10% that is 0.1 raised to the power 1 because time period is just one year 1 year 2 minus year 1 is just one so we will divide it by 1 so the formula will be 1 divided by 1.1 because 1 plus 10% that is 0.1 1 divided by 0.1 so we'll divide if we divide 800 by 1.1 we'll get this number now in year 3 the difference in year is 2 so time here will become 2 so 1 divided by 1.1 raised to the power 2 this is the multiplication factor and if we calculate it 640 rupees at the start of year 3 is equivalent to 528.82 rupees of today similarly for year 4 our time value will be 3 because 4 minus 1 is 3 so the multiplication factor will become 1 divided by 1.1 raised to the power 3 so if we multiply this multiplication factor to this revenue value we will get 383 so a present value of 510 rupees at the start of year 4 is equal to 383 rupees 
so now we can use this same formula or same concept for calculating the present lifetime value so we already calculated this total margin per month now we just have to add discounted values of this uh, revenue figures so 41 rupee after say start after 24 months is not equal to 41 rupees of today so here in the next column we will find what is the total present value that is after discounting this 41 rupees for 24 months what is the value of that 41 rupees so you can see that i have added this present day value formula here our discount rate is one percent monthly so in the example we were using the discount rate of 10 percent yearly here we are using a, a discount rate of one percent monthly now again how to find this discount rate so normally this discount rate you can for your calculation you can approximate to uh, the amount you are getting from your bank so at present in india you get around four to five percent if you invest in fd so you can use that discount rate so this does not depend on the company this does not depend on your business this depends on the economic scenario in your country or in your geography so in india you can use four to five percent per annum and you can calculate it at monthly for simplicity here i am using one percent monthly so suppose we have to give this cost at the end of month one so at the end of month one will be losing 40,000 rupees. So what will be the present value of this 40,000 rupees today? So we have to discount it for one month. We can write this divided by one plus discount rate. Our discount rate is this raised to the power time raised to the power symbol is this and time is here one month so 40000 rupees at the end of month 1 is equivalent to 39603 rupees of today similarly what will be the value of 105000 rupees at the end of month 2 here we have to discount it for 2 months so this divided by one plus our discount rate is to the power two because now we have to discount it for two months because we are getting this value getting this revenue after two months so this is the present value of this revenue uh, one lakh two thousand 931 similarly what will be the present value of this 73500 1 plus discount rate raised to the power 3 this is the present value of this 73500 now again, we don't have to write formula for the rest of the cell. We can simply drag this formula. But again, if we start dragging, you can see that we are using this C3 cell, which we don't want to move with the formula. So we can just put C3 cell in with dollar symbol. You can use F4 key to put both the dollar symbols you don't have to type dollar symbol you can just use f4 key after selecting it press f4 and you will get the dollar symbols so now i can drag this formula or extend this formula just randomly check whether this formula is working fine or not so you can see that the present value of 348 is 348 divided by 1 plus 
C3 that is discount rate raised to the power 18 because the time period is 18. So now we have calculated the present day value of all these transactions or all this revenue. For example, at the end of month 24, we were getting 41 rupees and today's term that is equivalent to 32 rupees only. So today, if you take this 32 rupees, put it in bank after 24 months, you will get 41 rupees. So these are the present day values of our revenue numbers. So what is the total value? Total present day value, we can just add all these values. It's 2,95,679. 400 customers, this is the value. Per customer value is this divided by 100. So it's 2,956.79. So you can see that discounted value is little bit lower uh, when we originally calculated it without discounting the total value was 3100 rupees around 100 rupees. Now due to discounting or due to the interest rate, the total lifetime value is 2956. Now here we use the really complicated formula. You don't have to use this formula. You can use NPV formula as well. In NPV formula, you just have to give the margins. You don't have to discount your every revenue. You can just your margin, total margin, and it will calculate the present day value, then automatically sum it for you. So if I select it, again, first we have to give a discount rate as well. So yeah. So it is C3. Yeah. So you can see that both the formulas are giving me the same value. Here I had to first discount it using this complex formula of discount rate. If you don't want to use that formula, you can directly use this NPV formula and it will give you the same result without this complicated mathematics. You just have to give original margin non-discounted margin and you can find out the NPV value. So both will give you the same result. So again, after even after discounting, you can see that we are making around 2,956 rupees per customer. So even after discounting, even after losing 400 rupees in the first month, we are making profit. Now let's Solve another question. So which of the following formula is correct? Plus A1, A2, add A1, A2, sum A1, A2 or total A1, A2. Just write your answer in the check. Yes, the correct formula is C, sum A1, A2. Now another question, if your friend is offering you 100 rupee today or 105 rupee after one year, which one is more valuable if the discount rate is 10%? So the answer is 100 rupees today because uh, the interest rate is 10%, this 100 will turn into 110 after one year. So now uh, this is the final question. Now what should we tell Rakesh our finance guy? for his statement regarding the offer. Rakesh was saying that we will be making a loss of rupees 500. The offer is not useful. Now you have two options. First, you can tell Rakesh that you are correct. We should not implement this offer. Or you should ask Rakesh that Rakesh should use concept of business analytics while evaluating business proposition. What should Rakesh do? Uh, the correct answer is B. I am seeing a lot of A's. 
uh, you uh, we have seen that we are making around 3000 rupees per customer if we implement the offer even after making a loss of 400 rupees in the first month we are getting around 3000 rupees back from our customers so we should use the business analytics concept and evaluate the proposition so yeah uh, let's go back to so yeah uh, this is just uh, one concept of customer lifetime value you if you are following shark tank or other you have heard this terms of customer lifetime value customer acquisition cost this is what customer lifetime value is so uh, this should be your uh, journey of learning business analytics first you have to understand the business you should have a basic understanding of common business terms like profit loss customer acquisition cost etc then you should learn excel basics here by basic i mean you should know how to use pivot table how to use formulas like vlookup npv sum etc then you should know data visualization you should be able to convert your data into graphs and charts in excel or any other tool then you should have a decent understanding of probability and statistics then you should also know some optimization models uh, such as solver in excel etc then at last you should know the predictive modeling in any of the tool excel is the easiest so we have created uh, the course on business analytics where we have covered all these topics and that course is based on the case based learning also so you will find uh, a similar cases that we have discussed today you will also find uh, quizzes in between and you will also find assignments in in the course this course is created by two of us i am pukhraj and uh, my co instructor is abhishek bansal we both have around 5 years of experience in data analytics and business analytics and we both are from iit roorkee and then we have done mba as well